Lessons from the life of Saint Joseph was Saint Joseph was the untiring pastor the true shepherd according to the model of John Marie Vianney to deepen the commitment of all the priests to interior renewal for the sake of a stronger witness to the gospel in today's life there has to be an authentic and renewed conversion to the lord the savior of the world for we need to rediscover the joy of the gospel and the missions so therefore the main thing about the catholic church that it needs to bring a change a redefined process and a procedure that needs to be simplified in the missions to walk by the people's side to shepherd god's people on the way to the promised land that is heaven to shepherd with the smell of the sheep for the renewal of the church largely depends on the life of the pastors the universal catholic church in india and in goa is blessed to have such a pastor who lived and died without abandoning the flock of christ that was saint joseph was who is relevant even to the church today in the journey of self renewal he always molded god's people because he had the smell of the sheep in the pitiful state of uh, sri lanka where there was no heart and soul he wanted uh, to be part of the missions and help the catholics there he slept and sleep sleepless nights in contemplation at foot of the cross of milagres in olga praying that the lord may show him the way to sri lanka armed with the weapons of unwavering faith undeterred hope and a heart full of charity he finally embarks to the land of ceylon he is a pastor who does everything for god right from his seminarian days he wanted a constant communion with god and even edified his companions by silence and seclusion prayer and abstinence very in early life he realized the mission which god was preparing him for that is the communion with the divine master the priesthood its ideas and conceptions are uh, more than just being a man chosen by god but being an image of christ handed down in the new testament writings he proclaims a message which he has received from the father to be sent out to be entrusted by christ himself and commissioned for his mission his doctrine his compassion his tenderness which flows from the father and this is the reason he can nothing to do on his own but everything belongs to the father and to jesus and jesus is only concern and mission is to give back the whole existence and activity to the father by doing his will through the apostle the ministry of the pastors is a continuation of the mission the privilege and the responsibility that is entrusted by jesus himself this continuity of the mission of jesus by the pastors is even present today and it is this mission and this relationship that saint joseph was was called to do to remove all the discord in his own and his clothing his food everything became like the flock he was filled with the power of the holy spirit and he was detached from everything and from everyone and so perfectly united with god that he appeared more dead than alive at night he prayed on his knees in reverence humility and devotion before the blessed sacrament sometimes prostrate on the cold stone steps of the altar in union with christ he became one with him he forgave all sins received the holy spirit and qualified by his own natural ability nor by the things which pleased others but by the power of christ to become a living instrument of jesus at the heart of the priest mission is a living relationship with christ because the priest sees as christ sees and loves as christ loves that is becoming christ to others this is the purpose of the ordination the priest needs to continue to grow in union with christ through prayer and intimacy with him Saint Joseph was uh, was uh, proclaiming the mercy of God even before the mercy was uh, proclaimed by Saint Faustina. He could capture the hearts of the kings, the people, the Christians and people of all faith. He was a man of love and mercy was open to all. He this is the very foundation of the church's life. The pastoral activity should be activity of tenderness which makes present to the believers nothing but a witness to the world of the mercy of God himself. The church's very credibility is seen in the merciful and compassionate love that it proclaims to the world. Saint Joseph was was every ready, diligent, untiring confessor, spiritual advisor and preacher who sought after by most of the prominent personalities. In his letter to the superior during the 8 months that he was he went to the different parts of the island visiting the sick and the dying in Ceylon. The Church of Christ is becoming more administrative than pastoral, more institutional than motherly, insensitive to the plight of the faithful. Therefore, many times the church suffers and people go away from God and the church because pastors are rude judges rather than merciful fathers. The confessions have fallen into disuse. People no longer feel welcomed in the church because of the rules, procedures, rituals, and traditions. 
pastors have become busy organizing activities for the few who are seen around in the parish leaving the 99 to feed for themselves so therefore the church and its pastors need to contemplate the mystery of the mercy which is the life of the trinity the salvation of the world because of god's mercy jesus himself was god's mercy and those who are called to shepherd the flock have to be apostles of god's mercy for mercy is the force that reawakens us to new life and instills in us courage to look forward to the future with hope we need a church which will walk by the people's sides and the pastors need to go in search of the weak the wounded the difficult to make them walk back in the path of christ so this is the most relevant message of the pastoral visits to the families they must uh, remain the most effective means of going in search of the sheep no matter what the pandemic or other uh, we have to be concerned for the flock the cost of the church of christ is paying for the lack of pastoral visits is immense the damage that is done to the bride of christ due to neglect of the sacrament of reconciliation saint joseph was went about showing god's mercy He started to go first in the morning and then back for the love of the need of a hearing confession and love of a pagan who with the help of God wants to convert himself by the grace of God he was called to Treli Cheri occupying ourselves in the service of our neighbors considering from them the Christians of Canada were deprived of spiritual food every Christian is called to communicate the love of and the mercy of Christ to its brethren Through the sacrament of reconciliation and penance God's mercy is communicated in a very special way through the ministry of the priests and Saint Joseph was helps to rediscover this vocation and the mystery of mercy for the pastor is called to proclaim the gospel of joy because he needs to leave his comfort zone and venture out and become a missionary he should not fall prey to practical relativism spiritual desertification tomb psychology spiritual worldliness and other modern forms of uh, ideologies saint joseph was is the most ideal pioneer who helps us to become the true pastors after christ his own life was full of a particular timetable from the morning with the mass office of reading the reading of the command of jesus that to proclaim the gospel to the whole creation he made the sign of the cross on the forehead with the holy water prostrated for prayers recited acts of faith hope and love and and again again repeated these formulas on his journey after finishing his daily prayers in peace and quiet and devotion he would then move on for his destination he would have his meals in hurry spend the nights on a mat at a church on catholic homes or in the open on his expeditions he would uh, Tra- travel through the territories of dutch he would be alone without any attendants carrying the musket and medical aid his journeys would be on foot for many days he would walk speedily and would difficult to catch up with him he was available to his sheep 24/7 and never off duty his ministry for people of all faith who flocked him for prayers and favors the priest today needs to have a thirst uh, to give to the people the love of god people are looking for the church which can give them god experience they look for spiritual healing and liberation and joseph was was a model of overcoming the business mentality of the church which is solely an institution without the presence of crucified and risen christ the missionary zeal evangelical methods are more relevant to the church today to go again to the prairie ferries to be present in the parishes and the dioceses and in the families the formation of the laity is a challenge to the church in india today the lay faithful need to be formed today and to commit themselves to the priority to initiate programs for lay people formation and to equip them to play their roles in the church and society is of utmost importance understanding the missions saint joseph was understand understood the mission even before the second vatican council was called for a renewal of the missionary spirit within the church so the theology of the religious of the world mission methods better adopted to the times but uh, saint joseph was practiced the missionary zeal even before that because he saw the different facets of uh, missionary activity and provided much encouragement and guidance for the expansion of the faith and of the church he encouraged native uh, clergy because indigenous people know better than anyone as a best method to follow and know the people their language and can gain access where a foreign priest could never gain access the local clergy are equal in knowledge and powers with the foreign missionaries so therefore laity also should be involved in the source of uh, renewal of the social order be given particular attention human promotion through schools works of charity in the mission encourage social reforms demanded by justice and charity the attitude towards other cultures was very negative earlier and the heathens were referred to as pagan savages and barbarians but uh, destroy or extinguish whatever the people process uh, that is naturally good just or beautiful 
actually these pagan people they are the ones who require the most uh, in need for evangelization because they are blinded by their uh, instincts and uh, slaved uh, to their passions and sinful attitudes so therefore evangelization must promote schools and works of charity in the mission and social reforms of justice and charity the other cultures were earlier viewed as negative but today we need to see that the church becomes a sacrament of both unity and salvation and retrieval of the theology of the local and particular church the church of christ is truly present in all the localized groups of the faithful no matter how poor or small they are we have to have consciousness of the catholic church the churches are represented not only by the bishop but also by the laity the pilgrim church is missionary by its very nature and there is urgency for the missionary activity to grow to people of all faith to preach the gospel and the specific purpose of the missionary act is to plant the church among those peoples and groups which do not know Christ the pastoral and economical orientation of the catholic church has a uh, increase in the modern time with dialogues with other peoples of uh, different faiths formation of christian community and apostolate of the laity the missionary bishops at the council have also expressed the burden of history which is full of uh, colonization neo colonization racialism and other drastic consequences for the mission that made their presence felt there is also a lot of uh, highlighting of spiritual perspectives in the mission there is equal level with other churches they are subjects of missionary activities uh, in different countries inculturation is also incorporated in order to make the message of christ more agreeable and uh, pleasing to the people also deals with the relationship uh, between missionary activity and human progress and development brotherhood peace and unity and the interests of liberty and progress there are many letters which are presented by the second vatican council for the new evangelization and transmission of faith at the end of the colonial period it was historically the mission that went hand in hand with colonization however the rejection of colonization mission to fell less uh, into disrepute and the christianity was identified with colonial powers and therefore it was seen as foreign degraded and destroyed the noble cultural tradition of the colonized people so therefore in the third world countries there is a cry for liberation from corrupt unjust structures uh, called for a prophetic witness the social and temporal dimension of jesus's ministry was brought into limelight and the concept of mission territory was being extended to include all human areas and relationship which are foreign to the gospel of jesus and to proclaim the gospel values to the ends of the world so that salvation service of the reign of uh, christ may grow through compassion responsibility for the poor and the liberation of the oppressed bettering the condition of human beings abolishing poverty building up a world where every person is free to uh, live his own or her own life in his own her choices so therefore spirituality is a structural transformation that calls for a responsibility against injustice and exploitation it is working for the fuller life of people the love of god love of neighbor is a center of today's mission evangelization and proclamation is witness through life and through works so therefore developmental work and missionary work go hand in hand and therefore we have to be another christ in the mission the new understanding of mission is gaining momentum nowadays that is to bring the salvific value of the gospel to the ends of the world therefore missions uh, are used uh, in order to work for with people of other faiths evangelization is also used uh, to help the pastoral care. the mission work can nowadays be done through literature to dialogue with other communities and through zeal and service the church today needs to be evangelizing through the witness of life and preaching her main task begins by evangelizing herself by constant conversion renewal and credibility to the world modern man listens more willingly to witnesses than to teachers the popular piety needs to be rediscovered piety is expressed for the search of god through faith pilgrimage and religious festival novenas and other devotions connected with lent and holy week they need to be rediscovered and popular piety needs to be open and away from uh, dangers of superstition mere external religion the religion of the people the expressions of popular piety are the main for demands our attention especially at the time when we are looking for new evangelization small christian communities need to be formed and the seeds of the word need to be sown to prepare the gospel and the human effort was for searching for god even in other religions there is ordinary way for salvation and there are extraordinary ways which god can reveal himself through the people 
but we need to respect and esteem all these religions because they are all made in the image and likeness of god but we need to give them the fullness of the gospel we need to acknowledge in them the signs of christ's present working of the holy spirit even though they contain some errors the mutual advancement on the road of religious inquiry and experience other religions give a positive challenge for the church stimulating her to discover and acknowledge the signs of christ's present working of the spirit to examine more deeply her own identity and bear witness to the fullness of the revelation interreligious dialogues is very important for peace in the world and a duty for all christian to live in a friendly sincere and a more better way with openness with others saint joseph was lived in the pre conciliar era his uh, vision of the mission and missionary activities was first exercised in north canara and then in ceylon where he lived genuinely embracing and pioneering way the original version of saint paul's gospel and missions to the world his heroic virtues cannot be compared he often risked his life for the love of christ his heroic ministry which uh, was full of fervor and received with the joy of christ and willing to risk his life for the kingdom might be proclaimed and the church be established in foreign lands his simplicity of life the spirit of prayer he was poor obedient and humble detached and self sacrificing he arrived in sri lanka as a humble beggar but carried out his exemplary priestly ministry he also continued to be an example and teacher for many reasons because he was an exemplary priest a sure guide an example of a patient suffering in the cause of the gospel loving care for the church even in persecution a living icon of god's mercy and reconciling love he showed the importance of transcending religious differences in the service of the peace teaching us genuine worship of god without any discrimination hatred and violence respect for sacredness of life respect for dignity freedom of others loving commitment to welfare of all he was an exemplary missionary zeal because he knew how to offer the truth the beauty of the gospel in a multi religious context where there were buddhists and other pagans were living on the island of sri lanka he had great respect dedication perseverance and humility and his evangelical charity reached out to everyone the main secret of his uh, uh, mission and his uh, zeal was his devotion and his filial relation to mary in the royal road to fidelity to his own vocation and effective help advancing in his vocation this he uh, did throughout his life opening his heart by faith to the maternal love of mary he even wrote the deed of bondage offering himself as a perpetual slave of the blessed virgin surrendering himself to her in her hands so that she may dispose of him and all his possession as she willed that was the the main reason of for his selfless apostolate he braved all the troubles and adversity especially from the dutch and the buddhists and the kings and especially did his mission to the korin and jaffna roaming with a rosary in his neck and exposing himself to all the dangers that his dispersed flock uh, would have to encounter he was even discovered in a house but then he was put into prison but then god was kind to him he celebrated mass in that island for many years he had great concern to strengthen the faith of the persecuted catholic to revitalize the catholics over there the pastoral work in every village was done by him he heard confession baptized people regularized marriages he co- conducted groups of catholic families and encouraged them to persevere in their faith he mobilized them to build a chapel a small hut and maintain a school and appointed a lay leader and a catechist and established confraternity to raise funds for regular honorarium he did most of his work in private homes during the hours of darkness the dutch authority kept on hunting for him to avoid being noticed by them as priest ministering to the flock he even disguised himself as beggar coolie and others he had secret sympathizers who saved him on many occasions He was stayed in the dangerous coastal areas only for limited periods before returning to the main Candian territory where he was protected by the king. His protection was important safeguard for his journeys through the interior. No help came against bears and dangerous elephants which blocked his path through the forest land. He became known to the Sinhalese as another Jesus. Because of the process of inculturation and religious dialogue which was very important his mission was very fruitful he learned the local languages he spoke to the people did social work helped the poor the downtrodden and learned tamil and master singhalese and wrote many literature for these people he combined the lexicon for future use by his confreres and his intimate fr- intimate companion jacom gonzalves he studied and mastered the two languages tamil and buddhist zam pandits he commissioned them to write these classicals music literature and songs which was sustaining the faith of the sri lankans for the so many centuries that followed 
He even denounced injustices committed against Catholics and re- redeemed many, showing particular concern to ransom children who were sold as slaves. He even uh, was against the unjust laws of the Dutch. He issued a pastoral letter to the Catholics there to assert publicly their right to freedom of conscience to practice their religion of choice and protested against the laws that forced their children to attend Calvinist schools. The Dutch did not yield to the demand, but the native Catholic consolidated their identity. He was very humble and truthful and won the faith of the people. He faced real tests.